Hi, this is Keiko from Brooklyn Shoe Space. This is Shoe Talks Quarantine Edition. Today, I am going to do a double feature. I just saw Rebecca from Vegan Cord Wainers at one o'clock. Right now, I'm going to invite um, Francis from Francis Wapplinger. He makes bespoke shoes, beautiful, elegant shoes out in Long Island. I met him when we hosted a group of bespoke shoemakers at our space, did an exhibition called In These Shoes, and uh, that's when I met him the first time. And then since, he's come to our space and did like private classes, and it was really fun to see the process and the outcome and the progress every day. You know, it's a very slow process, um, but they are usually done within two weeks. Um, so it was really fun to see. Um, I'm going to invite him and maybe we get to see uh, sp his space that he works out of and some of the work that he might be working on right now. So let's see if he's here. Okay. Yes. Hello. Hi. Hi, Francis. Hi. Hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good to see you. You too. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, no, I can hear you. Okay, perfect. Yeah. So how are you? How is this quarantine for you? Um, I mean, I'm good. I'm, I'm healthy. Um, mm -hmm. My fiance, my family here in New York and Seattle, everyone's uh, been able to stay healthy. Um, good. So that's number one, I think. So in that Did sense, you... uh, we're all doing well, but it's definitely... Uh, kind of a crazy, yeah. stressful time. I think yeah. I can say that for everybody. Did uh, you escape Brooklyn, or are you still in Brooklyn? So I've I um, kind of escaped, I guess. But basically, I'm uh, my fiance and I moved to Brooklyn in January. So as you said, I've been doing some stuff at Brooklyn Shoe Space, um, a few other things in the city, and then I've been going back and forth a little bit because um, I haven't moved my studio yet. Mm -hmm. So starting March, I was like, all right, I'm gonna have to go back and forth every week. And then once a virus kind of hit and there's a lockdown, I just kind of stayed out um, um, oh, in laws sorry. and in well, the studio space here. Yeah, it's uh, in Long Island. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I pretty much uh, we were back in Brooklyn um, briefly just to check on the apartment, you know, in there quick and then just back out here and trying to be as um, careful as possible. Right. But yeah, pretty much, pretty much been in the studio uh, the whole time. So yeah, that is that's luxury. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that is no, great. I mean, yeah, what are you working on now? Huh? Sorry, what are you working on now? So I've got a few things I'm working on. Um, I just sent a pair out today, so I had to run over to the post office real quick. Um, so I have a, a pair ready to where I'm working on. Uh -huh. Some fitting shoes Ooh. and to stay sane, I started working on a pair for myself. So that's kind Great. of what keeps me. <laughs> yeah, you know, they do say shoemakers with no shoes, but you're really good at making your own pairs, you know? Yeah, it's been a while though, believe it or not. It's been a few years, maybe two oh, years. Oh, wow. Okay. So, so I can show you a little bit here since I'm in my studio. Yeah. So uh, we got this pair going for myself. Okay. Um, I What's actually am using mm -hmm. some of the pergame. I okay. think that's how you pronounce it, that leather. Per um, I got it when they did that shoe talk at Brooklyn. Oh, Pergamina. Shoe Space. Pergamina. Pergamina leather. Yes. Oh, great. Uh, They're from upstate New York. It's a family yeah. owned tannery. Yeah. So when you had the shoe talk, I had I uh -huh. had my eye on this hide. And so I was like, you know what? I think it's a good time. Let's let's you try that out. It out. Oh, great. Yeah. So I'm doing that. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm ready to wear. Similar stage. I was actually going to ask you if you're going to do a ready to wear because you're right now have been doing a lot of custom order. Yes. Made yes. To measure. Yeah. So before it's, it was all bespoke. Mm -hmm. um, but I started doing some ready to wear and working with a tailor actually okay. pretty close to Brooklyn shoe space. Okay. So I have four sizes there. This is the fifth size. So it's pretty limited, um, but it's kind of I just want to test it out kind of a side project to work on and then we'll see if people are interested i mean i'd love to keep doing that and kind of do a little bit of everything what is um, the price point for the ready to wear 
So those are $1,568. Uh -huh. um, and it's pretty much it's the same specifications uh, as a bespoke work. It's just a uh, it's just, just limited. Made. So it's, right. Yeah. So it's a standard size. Um, and right now there's three different color options. Mm -hmm. But all the ones in the shop are in just black black box cap. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. So I've been doing that, and that's kind of that project has been taking a while because the bespoke mm -hmm. is kind of the priority. Right. And what else? I'm doing a fitting shoe here. So Ooh. this is the for bespoke shoe. Nice. Okay. And what size? Is, what size is that? That's like a this one. Like men's. What is it? Men's forty-two and a half. Ten? Nine and a half? Ten? Forty-two and a half. That's like pretty much a nine and a half or so. Yeah. Men's. Yeah. Okay. And then. What else? I'll just give you everything I'm working on right now. <laughs> cool. If we get to see, that'll be great. Design stuff here. So uh -huh. that's kind of how I do my design work. Just tape off uh -huh. one side, another one. Fun. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, I feel like with everything that's going on, I've, I've had a few orders. I really am trying to, I finished a few since I've been back. So that's kind mm -hmm. of the, but then it's been so crazy just to kind of, keep saying i'll try to work on a bunch of different things at once yeah yeah i'm sure you've been doing similar no <laughs> me <laughs> no as I'm, much I, as you can as much as i can yes i have like maybe an hour or two a day okay. which is which is great for me yeah. yeah but today with a double feature i get double time so okay my husband, nice, my nice. like oh it's all afternoon you're gonna be gone i'm like <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's okay <laughs> um yeah i would love to see your space if you're open to moving your camera yeah let's see here it's so great so how was... cold is it there how warm is it what's is it like a little cottage kind of garage yeah so it's in a barn so my okay. in-laws they have a barn um my father-in-law has an ebay business so he used mm -hmm. part of it for that his office and then uh, my fiance and I kind of commandeered part of it and uh, made it into a studio a few years ago. I'm just going to try to switch the camera around. Okay. Ooh. So let's see. Nice. Here. So we have the wall blasts. Uh-huh. Well, you might recognize that. Yeah. Uh, here's my workbench, all the hand tools here. Mm -hmm. And then back here, all the polishes. Right gluing table, mm. skiving machine, sewing machine, and then... Wow, you have so much space. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so it's definitely going to be hard to give this space up, but uh, now that, that we're in the city, going back and forth, I mean, it's... You know, are you going back and forth a little bit, or are you... Kind yeah. Of, I mean, you even are? Eat, not right now so much. Uh, we're trying to pretty much stay put out here um, uh -huh. just so I can keep working and just keep making get caught up with stuff but even before this started I mentioned like we were going well at least I was going back and forth a little bit um, and that's fine but I mean I would love you know we just moved in the city and the goal is to move the workshop into the city yeah, um, yeah. but now yeah I was actually looking at um, a few spaces and then like right in uh, in March and I was like, all right, you know, let's, let's start looking, you know, just keep my eyes open. I want to move kind of soon. And then once this hit, I was like, all right, no, nope, uh -huh. I'm not looking. Not looking shy. But... Right. The hunkering down. We have somebody. Okay, Sabatu bespoke. Sarah is asking, are you able to focus and work well? Or is the anxiety of this time distracting you too? Um, yeah, I mean, I'm really trying to stay focused, get up early, just, you know, work all day, stay on a schedule. But without a doubt, I've had some days where I'm just like, this whole thing is exhausting. You know, like I'm just stopping at four o'clock. Uh -huh. um, I'm gonna, I started skateboarding again. So I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna go skateboard outside a little bit by myself. Uh huh. Wait, what um, do you wear when you skateboard? <laughs> What? Sorry, I missed. I couldn't hear. What do you wear when you, when you skateboard? I have an old pair of Adidas sneakers. Okay, okay. So, uh, 
Yeah, so I'll, I'll do that. I try to stay, you know, exercise, but definitely there's days where I'm like, it's, it's too exhausting or just the stress of kind of the situation. Right. If I don't do that, maybe I'll go in and I'll, I'll help out with the cooking. I'll do that mm -hmm. early. Mm -hmm. um, or I'll, you know, call my family and just, nice. you know, chat. So I think, I mean, all things considered, I'm trying to stay pretty focused, but I think everybody, it's just, you know, there'll just be a day like this situation is crazy. Like I need to just not think about the shoes. I don't want to, <laughs> you know, make a mistake if I'm kind of, you know, yeah, no, a little bit too stressed. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. I see on your Instagram that you work so early in the morning. Is like morning your usual, is that like the clearest time? Like Yeah. I mean, usually I try to get out to the studio around 9, 9.30. Um, but I'll get up, uh, not crazy, 7, 7.30, do a little stretching, a little workout, a little light breakfast, coffee, come out. But definitely in the morning, if I'm doing anything, any sewing uppers, uh, anything really delicate, that's all done in the morning. Morning, right? Yeah, yeah. In the evening, I'll do the insoles, some stuff that doesn't quite take as much focus usually. Okay. Yeah, but not like, not, I'm not getting up at like five in the morning or anything if possible. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, do you have any uppers in the works at the moment? Like, or you're, is it, are you, is everything in the stage of? Yeah, no, I don't any... really have any uppers lying around. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of did a few of those and yeah, I mounted the, the, the shoes for myself, the ready to wear. And then most recently the fitting shoes. Shoes, um, right. Yeah, so I don't actually have any uppers I'm making. Uh, at the For moment. the fitting shoes, do you have to meet your client or are you postponing it a little bit or? So that's kind of the issue now. I mean, now I'm pretty much caught up. Um, I have two other fitting shoes I need to start on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's like when this first started, you know, okay, I'm going to just do what I need to do. You know, I had a few orders that I just had to finish and then I can send those, which I did. But yeah, with the fitting shoes, that's once the fitting shoe's done, I mean, I'll probably finish that one up later today and then it's on hold. So I think same thing with you or any small business or craftsperson out there. I mean, once you do reach a point where it's everything's kind of on hold, that's, on hold. Yeah. that's when it gets a little nerve wracking, I think, for everybody when you're right. kind of uh, seeing that. But, you know, there's that's why I'm doing a shoe for myself because it's like, yeah. Start thinking too much about ah, everything's closed. I can't do this. Like, you know what? Just try, gonna try Breathe. to you know, wait out the storm and I'll try to enjoy what I what I can enjoy, you know. Right, right. So. And your um your fiance also is an artist, right? So do you work side by side? Yeah, so we have a joint studio space up here. So I showed you kind of my half and then she has her half on the other side. Uh -huh. So she's actually, uh, since I've been sitting here like working, like when I'm sitting doing the soul stitching, she's like, I'm going to start a painting of you. So someday oh, she'll be good. up here painting me, which is, it's kind of fun. Oh, and, so nice. you know, we get to kind of do our work and uh -huh. we're not totally by ourselves. You know, I have uh -huh. friends that are like by themselves and they're just like, oh, uh, like this is crazy. <laughs> so, right, right. I mean, all things considered, it definitely, uh, we're making it you know, work and trying to stay sane, I think. That's great. So, That's good. Yeah. Good. I actually have some question from the one of the viewers. How was it training in Italy? So yeah, a little ba bit of a backstory about <clears throat> how you started and um, sure. it'd be great to share a little bit. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'll try to keep a long story a little bit short. Um, basically, uh, I'd always been interested in shoes, played soccer, skateboarded, you know, the footwear is a big, uh, really important. And I started kind of airbrushing shoes. I heard of a school in the Seattle area where I grew up called Shoe School. So yeah. I went there and um, is it like, the, you have fun here. In Wales? Is no, it? it's oh. in Port Townsend. Oh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. And it's called Shoe School. So it's an hour outside Seattle. Um, I had a blast there. They're like, if you're, if you're having fun with us, you got to check out this, this other shoemaker 